They say that in the SEC, it just means more, but this game just doesn't matter. LSU will be playing Georgia in the SEC Championship this Saturday, but ultimately the result of this game doesn't matter. Yes, the winner will be the champion of the SEC, and that is, of course, a big deal and a big honor, but win or lose, Georgia is in the college football playoff. They win the game, they're definitely in. They lose, they're still getting in. LSU blew their chance of possibly getting in the playoff by losing to Texas A&M last week, 38-23 in College Station. So even if LSU pulls off the upset, they're not getting in the playoff. That was a very realistic possibility had they not lost to Texas A&M. So ultimately, the result of this game doesn't really matter. The only thing that does matter is who's taking home the trophy. But when it comes to playoff implications or anything like that, it doesn't have any role. It doesn't have a factor. It doesn't play a role here. So it does mean more, ultimately, the entire conference, but this game alone doesn't matter that much. But we're still here to predict it, though, and tell you everything you need to know for arguably the best conference in the country and their championship game. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. Ready to break down everything you need to know for the Tigers and the Bulldogs in the SEC championship for the fifth time ever. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. If you want spread picks for every single conference championship game and every single bowl game, this is the place for you. Not only will you get those spread picks, but you will get guaranteed winners as we are beating out over 80% of the national analysts and handicappers have been doing so each of the last four years, hitting 62% of our bets on the year, 80% on the money line. The Gridiron Expert is the only place, guys, where you can get guaranteed winners and guaranteed money right in your pocket, which is the perfect time to do it, right around the holiday season. So go check it out. I'll link to that down in the description below. Sign up and become a part of our GE Nation. So let's dive into this, guys. Again, the fifth all-time meeting between Georgia and LSU in the SEC Championship game. LSU has won three of the last four meetings against Georgia in the SEC Championship. Obviously, the last one came back in 2019. Joe Burrow and the Tigers took down the Bulldogs. Georgia is, despite all the success they've had, despite the playoff appearances that they've had, is still seeking their first SEC championship since 2017. So that is a big deal for Georgia. That does mean a lot to actually finally capture the conference for the first time since 2017. You take a look at the offenses, guys. We'll start with LSU. Uh, it's, it's an offense that really started slow, kind of came to life, and maybe starting to fizzle out a little bit here at the end of the season. The Tigers are averaging 32.5 points per game, and they're balanced with 242 passing yards per game and about 192 rushing yards per game, but it's pretty much a one-man show. It's the Jaden Daniels show. Over 2,500 passing yards, 15 touchdowns, just two interceptions, fantastic marks. Also leaves the team in rushing, though. 824 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. Jaden Daniels is the reason for LSU's offensive success. They don't really have many other big-time playmakers that have been helping him throughout the season. Yes, four other players have at least 100 rushing yards, but ultimately it's the Jaden Daniels show. And if he's not 100% in this game, he kind of got banged up a little bit at the end of that Texas A&M game. If he's not 100% or if he wasn't able to go on Saturday against Georgia, LSU is done for, no doubt about it. You look at Georgia, they're a little bit different, a little bit better, some would say. The Bulldogs averaging 38.3 points per game, nearly 286 through the air, and 203 on the ground. So very, very balanced, very, very efficient. Stetson Bennett had a very strong start to the year, kind of fizzled out towards the end, has still thrown for over 3,100 yards, 16 touchdowns, and six interceptions. He does have four games, though, where he has not thrown a single touchdown pass. So you never know what kind of Stetson Bennett you're going to get. You're going to have the guy that, you know, torched Oregon and really had a fantastic start to the season, or you're going to have the guy that, you know, in a couple game stretch against like Kent State and Auburn and guys like that didn't really play well at all. Kenny McIntosh, though, has been phenomenal at running back for the Bulldogs, 654 yards, eight touchdowns. Dajan Edwards right behind him with 604 yards and seven touchdowns. And Georgia has arguably the best tight end in the country in Brock Bowers, who has 645 yards and five touchdowns on the year. So even on the weeks or the games where Stetson Bennett isn't on his A game, Georgia has plenty of guys that can come in and pick up the slack. LSU really doesn't have that. When you take a look at the defense, for LSU. How are they going to find a way to stop Georgia in this game? Well, the Tigers are giving up just 21.5 points per game, which isn't a horrible mark. 204 through the air, 144 on the ground. But this is the same LSU team that just last week against Texas A&M got torched by Devin A-Chain. 
They allowed 429 yards to the Aggies, an Aggies offense that had been horrible all year long, and allowed 274 on the ground, 215 of those coming from A-Chain, who ran the ball 38 times in the game. If LSU cannot make Georgia one-dimensional, meaning if they cannot take away the run and force Stetson Bennett to win it through the air, or take away the pass and force Georgia to win it on the ground, the Tigers, once again, don't stay at a chance. They have to find a way to slow down this Georgia offense and force them to be one-dimensional and only win the game in one aspect. Last week, A&M torched them really on both sides of the ball. The ground game was more dominant, but the passing game was there too. And that was a bad A&M offense. Georgia's offense a light years ahead of the Aggies. It's not a promising sign heading into this game. You do question a little bit the motivation for LSU, knowing that, yes, you want to win the SEC, of course, but you can't play spoiler and you can't go to the playoff yourself. So where is that motivation other than just saying, hey, we've won the SEC, great, now we're going to the Sugar Bowl right in our backyard. You take a look at Georgia. Arguably, Kirby Smart's your head coach. You're going to have one of the best defenses in the country. The Bulldogs are allowing just 11.3 points per game, just 270.7 total yards per game. Talk about a fantastic mark. We always say if you can hold a team to under 300 yards per game on average, you're doing a pretty dang good job. And Georgia does that year in and year out. The outstanding mark to me is the fact that Georgia is giving up to 79.5 rushing yards per game. Yeah, we have just 191 passing yards per game. Ultimately, Georgia is going to make LSU win it through the air. Georgia will and can make LSU one-dimensional. The Tigers aren't going to be able to run the ball with their running backs, and Jaden Daniels probably isn't going to be able to be able to use his legs in this game. He's probably not going to be able to win the game on the ground. It's going to come down to can Jaden Daniels win the game solely through the air. And because Georgia pretty much is automatically going to make LSU one-dimensional, their cornerbacks, their defensive backs are going to be able to hone in left pass and make it very, very difficult for Jaden Daniels in this game. Another interesting fact that no one's really talking about, LSU's offensive line has been horrendous this year. So not only will Georgia do a pretty good job of covering the pass, they might be able to get a decent pass rush against LSU. The Tigers have given up an insane 41 sacks this season. 41 sacks LSU has given up. Jaden Daniels has been sacked in 40 of those 41 sacks. I expect Turby Smart to drop a lot of pressure on LSU. A lot of blitz packages to pressure Jaden Daniels and get LSU behind chains. Expect that. Second and long. Third and long. If LSU can't fix their pass protection, they definitely don't stand a chance. They've got to give their quarterback time because that's the only way they're going to be able to win this game. I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Ultimately, guys, what's going to happen in the SEC Championship? I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. We're picking Georgia. And we're picking Georgia to win comfortably. I don't see this game coming close. I don't see this game coming down to the wire, down to the fourth quarter. I think it's going to be a slow start for both teams, but I ultimately think by the second quarter, or at the worst, early midway third, Georgia starts to pull away. They get a couple of big plays, and they pull away in this game. Uh, again, I think LSU really lost their incentive here. Again, we know that even if Georgia were to lose this game, they wouldn't lose it by a, a large margin. They're not going to lose by 22 like Michigan did to Ohio State. If Georgia loses this game, it's going to come by one possession, and the committee would still keep them in the top four. If Georgia wins the game, obviously they're the top four, and they're probably going to be the number one seed. LSU knew that had they defeated A&M and then defeated Georgia, they'd be in the playoff more than likely. Well, now that incentive is gone. So the incentive of playing spoiler is gone. The incentive of getting the playoff is gone. The only incentive here is just to win and go play, uh, you know, End your season where it began, right in your backyard in New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl. That's really the only incentive there. Uh, obviously, it's still a big deal for both teams to be in this position, to have a chance to win the SEC. But Georgia, clearly to me, has a lot more to play for here. Clearly to me, is the much better team. And I expect Georgia to win this game comfortably in Atlanta on Saturday afternoon. And they will retain the number one seed heading into another college football playoff run. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at The Great Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on thegridironexpert.com. Every single conference championship, every single bowl game right here at The Great Iron Expert. Make sure to go check it out. The link down in the description below. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on The Great Iron Expert. Yeah!